is special for Stand TNT. They don't want to hire too many senior citizens or elderly people. So what do you have to look forward to? Only your social security. The system is in deep financial trouble. It, it the pace that people have to work for a living today, I feel that by the time they're 62, the majority of them are burned out and they need retirement. For myself, I don't think it'll make too much difference with the younger ones that are working now, trying to build up something for their retirement won't look too good. Do you think you'll be able to retire on Social Security? No, not the way it's going these days. Ever since President Reagan presented his plan for rescuing the troubled Social Security system a month ago, people have been talking. The 23 million Americans now living in retirement say their benefits are being eaten up by inflation and they can't afford any cuts. Workers contemplating retirement are asking whether they can afford it. Young workers are asking if Social Security will be there when they retire. The administration says drastic action is needed now, but members of Congress are rebelling against parts of the president's plan. The whole issue of Social Security is turning into one of social insecurity. Good evening, I'm Rick Roberts. Very few issues touch all of us like Social Security. Most agree that the system is in trouble. Part of the problem lies with the Social Security program itself. It's undergone some dramatic changes since its inception 46 years ago. President Franklin Roosevelt signed the Social Security Act into law back in 1935. It was intended to provide supplementary retirement income for a limited number of Americans over age 65. It was financed with a 1% payroll tax. Over the years, the program grew to include an ever-increasing number of workers, and as participation grew, so did the benefits. Today, Social Security funds disability benefits, old-age medical care, and a variety of other benefits. The money received by individual beneficiaries has also increased steadily. In 1972, Congress tied benefits to inflation. Every time the cost of living went up, so did Social Security payments. And to pay for the increased benefits, we have had to pay higher Social Security taxes. Today we pay 6.65% of the first $29,700 in income to Social Security. Half of us now pay more in Social Security taxes than income tax. Social Security taxes are scheduled for another increase in 1984. But that still isn't enough to adequately fund Social Security. This year, the system will pay out more than $160 billion in benefits. Health and Human Services Secretary Richard Swiker says that rate of expenditure will mean trouble soon, and if nothing is done, the system will go broke as early as the fall of 1982. On May 12th, President Reagan presented his blueprint for saving the Social Security system. The president wants to reduce benefits for people who retire before the age of 65. According to the latest estimates, six out of ten workers do just that. But the idea to reduce benefits has already been shot down once by the Senate. Reagan wants to lower initial benefits for new retirees at any age. He wants a lower ceiling on the maximum family benefits for future retirees. Tighter eligibility rules for future recipients of disability payments. And an end to some ex-federal workers getting both Social Security benefits and pensions from the government civil service system. On the other side of the coin, the president wants retirees over 65 to be able to earn as much as they want without losing benefits. The administration also wanted to delay a cost of living increase for Social Security recipients scheduled for next month. That met with immediate uproar and was promptly dropped. Reaction to the Reagan plan was immediate. Marsha K. Cady talked to some retired Iowans on May 12th, the day that plan was unveiled. Uh, 
43,000 Polk County residents, of which 11,000 live in Des Moines, can count their blessings that President Reagan's proposals won't affect them very much. Those who plan to file for Social Security in the next few years may have to take another look at their plans. The administration idea to save money by discouraging early retirement will affect them. In the past, 66% of the county's Social Security recipients asked for their benefits when they were between the ages of 62 and 65. I am of the opinion that a lot of people are continuing to work for a variety of reasons. Perhaps some continue to work actually because they need to work. Uh, some continue to work simply because they want to work. Some Social Security recipients disagree with Reagan's proposals. At the pace that people have to work for a living today, I feel that by the time they're 62, the majority of them are burned out, and they need retirement. For myself, I don't think it'll make too much difference, but the younger ones that are working now, trying to build up something for their retirement, it won't look too good. The proposals are controversial and expected to spend some time in Congress. With photographer Tom Sherrod, I'm Marsha K. Cady, 5 TV News, Des Moines. Social Security offices have received a lot of phone calls, people wondering if their benefits are in jeopardy. Joining us now is Becky Stallman, a field representative with the Social Security office in Ames. Becky, what types of phone calls have you been getting and what are people asking about all of this confusion? Well, initially we received a lot of calls and a lot of people came into the office to ask when the changes would be in effect and who it would affect. and. What would that mean for their Social Security and whether or not they would receive money? That has dropped off somewhat since the initial news came out, but people are quite concerned about whether or not they're going to receive as much as they had thought from Social Security. The fact of the matter is you don't know what changes there are going to be, do you? And, you? and you won't until Congress takes some action. No, this has caused a lot of confusion. People seem to feel that these changes are going to certainly go into effect and that it's already been passed. It is a proposal at this point. It is being considered by both the House and the Senate committees, but that's all it is right now is a proposal. And the final form in which it is passed, if all of it is passed, will be in question until Congress gets through with their work on the bill. So we should make that clear right now. Nothing is changed as Nothing of today. Nothing is changed as of today. Uh, much of the legislation as it is proposed would not go into effect until 1982 under the proposal. Do many Iowans retire early? This is uh, one of the big things to come up early is the President's plan to cut the uh, uh, Social Security payments for people who retire at age 62. Are there many Iowans involved in this? Well, I believe there are quite a few. Nationally, the average of people who retire early before age 65 runs, I think, about 60 percent. And I think the same figure would be true for central Iowa, that there are quite a few people who choose to retire before they reach the age of 65. What's the present system now for people who retire before 65? What type of benefits do they get and why are they, or how much are they cut? If you retire at age 62, your benefit check is 20% less than if you wait until you are 65. That is prorated on a month by month basis, um, so that it would be 20% at 62 and a little more for each month that you wait until you are closer to your 65th birthday. Under President Reagan's proposal, this figure would be 55% of what you would get at 65 if you take it at 62. So the percentage would be reduced quite a bit. Instead of 20% less, it would be 45% less. And that's quite a cut. And if you retire early and you get 80% of your benefits now, that you get the 80% from there on. That is a permanent reduction, yes. Each check that you get from there on will be that 20% less. It will not change at age 65. Well, on the other side of it, the president says, well, let's have retirees work longer if they want. And there are some proposals from some congressmen to up the retirement age to 60 to 68. Uh, do many Iowans work after the age of 65? Yes, there are some that who do. Um, there are some who depend on that income just to live on. They can't really afford to quit. There are others who really enjoy what they're doing and don't necessarily have any intention of retiring. Um, it's kind of hard to say for what reasons they do, but there are quite a number who continue to work. Right now, there are many who limit their income so they can keep their full Social Security check all the way through the year. How much can you earn after 65 without losing any benefits? This year, if you are 65 or older, you can earn up to $5,500 and still receive all of your Social Security checks. If you earn over that amount, for every $2 you earn above that figure, one dollar has to be withheld from your Social Security check. 
What other benefits are there to Social Security? It's a big program, spends a lot of money. What can people get from Social Security? Well, most people think of Social Security in terms of retirement and whether or not they're going to live to 62 or 65 and see any benefit from that. There are certain benefits to be had, though, from a person who is currently working. Uh, there's disability insurance coverage and survivor insurance coverage. If a worker becomes disabled or uh, dies, there are benefits payable to certain categories of survivors and to dependents on the record. And this really provides a very good insurance program for people who qualify under those circumstances. Nobody wants to collect under those type of circumstances, but if you do find yourself in that situation, the money certainly is very much of a necessity for these people. Social Security now also funds Medicaid, is that? Medicare, right? Medicare, not Medicaid. Um, Medicare is a program administered by the Social Security Administration and it is funded by the Social Security taxes that are paid. A small portion of it also comes from people who pay monthly premiums who have medical coverage under Medicare. Now there is some confusion in this whole issue of Social Security. There are four trust funds, isn't that right? That, yes. That mm -hmm. we get, that we pay the money out of for, mm -hmm. for the benefits. And, and one of the trust funds is the, the big one that's in trouble. Which one is that? Okay, the Retirement and Survivors Trust Fund is the one that they are talking about will see a deficit by mid-1982. Right now, there is a balance in the trust fund. At the current rate, benefits are being paid. However, it would see a deficit of approximately $2 billion by fall of 1982. The other three trust funds, the Disability Trust Fund and the two Medicare Trust Funds, the hospital and medical insurance ones, are running long. They have a surplus in the Treasury and there's enough money there to cover that. There is a proposal right now to allow Congress to borrow among the trust funds so that the short-term deficit in the retirement one would be offset by the extra money in the other three. That's probably going to be a little while before Congress finally does something about Social Security, but aren't there a few things that they're going to act on probably fairly quickly, at least in committee? There are some proposals that have already been endorsed by both the House and the Senate committees, and they are scheduled to be reported out for debate in the full House and Senate this month. Those include eliminating the minimum. Right now there is a guaranteed minimum retirement benefit at 65 of $122. Under the proposal, um, you would get the actual benefit is figured by the formula. If the formula only pays you $40 a month, that's what you would get rather than the guaranteed $122. There is also a proposal to eliminate benefits to students between the ages of 18 and 22, to phase that out over a four-year program. And there is also a proposal to eliminate the lump sum death payment except to surviving widows and to surviving children. The proposal to eliminate payment to college students, so would that have a very big impact in Central Iowa? Yes, I believe it would. From what we can determine, there are approximately 1,200 students at Iowa State who receive Social Security benefits, so right there would be a sizable number of people who would be affected and who would have their Social Security checks phased out over a four-year period and eventually dropped altogether. What's the average Social Security recipient get? Is there such a, a number as an average payment? Well, it depends on what category of payments you are talking about. I believe the latest figures for, say, a retired person who is collecting benefits is around $385 for that retired person. Um, beyond that, it depends on what category you're talking about and how many dependents are receiving on that person's record. What should a person do if they're, say, 60, 61, thinking of retiring early, or 64, and thinking of retiring at 65? What do you have to do to prepare for it as far as getting your benefits? Well, many people come in and check at the local Social Security office to see how the law may apply in their own particular situation. Depending on the type of work you do and when you're retiring, there are a number of answers that we can give to questions you may have. You can check and see how much your benefit might be at that particular point. And we usually uh, talk to you about what sort of documents we need for you to establish your claim, such as a birth certificate and your most recent W-2 forms or tax returns. When is it most advisable for them to come? Uh, is there a certain period? Can they come three, four years in advance, or should they wait? We usually would like to give a better idea of what your check would be if you're around age 60 or 61. Prior to that time, it's a little more difficult to give you a very accurate figure, simply because now um, retirement benefits are tied to 
indexing or what the dollar is worth at the time that you become 62. And since that is such a variable thing right now, it becomes awfully difficult to give you a figure that can be close to what you may expect to receive when you do retire. All right, Becky Stallman, the field representative with the Ames Social Security Office. Thank you for spending some time with Thank us. You. And we're going to continue our look into the problems facing the Social Security system in just a moment. Congress is now looking for ways to keep the Social Security system solvent. A few days ago, Budget Director David Stockman and Health and Human Services Secretary Schweiker defended the administration proposals. Joe Templeton has the report. Some 300 people, many of them members of organizations concerned with the elderly, attended a House hearing to express their opposition to President Reagan's proposed plan to cut back on early retirement benefits and reform the Social Security system. Budget Director David Stockman told the panel that critics of the administration's package don't understand the magnitude of the crisis facing Social Security. Unless both the House and the Senate pass a bill in this Congress which can be signed by the President in the next 15 months, the most devastating bankruptcy in history will occur on or about November 3rd, 1982, because at that point, even under optimistic economic assumptions, the plug will be pulled on the great check-writing machine in Baltimore, thereby precipitously severing the financial lifeline to 32 million retired Americans and their dependents and survivors. Earlier, Democrat uh, Jake Pickle, the subcommittee chairman, the committee told Richard Schweiker, Secretary, Secretary of Health and Human Services, Secretary that his panel will not approve any White House plan that would cut back on early retirement benefits unless it contains what he called a reasonable phase-in period. Schweiker said the administration is open to compromise. Joe Templeton, ABC News, Washington. In an effort to find out how Iowa's congressional delegation feels about the Social Security problem, we recently conducted separate interviews with Senator Roger Jepson and Congressman Neil Smith. Here's some of what they had to say. The system is in deep financial trouble. Now that's something that everyone that knows anything about Social Security uh, at all levels, in and out of government, has acknowledged for years, but it has been so politicized over the years by uh, all administrations and uh, uh, many people in Congress. It's been used as a sort of a political Santa Claus Christmas tree every election year to add uh, a new uh, a gift on it, that uh, it, uh, it has not really been discussed in the light of serious financial actuarial soundness. We have run into a period here where the outflow is greater than the inflow. It's nothing that can't be cured. But it does uh, require uh, uh, doing something about it. I mean, it's uh, the actuarial valuation that was made a few years ago has proved uh, uh, to not be correct. 
Uh, not that the people at the time made a mistake, but that the fact is that people are living longer than they were at the time. Our unemployment rate is higher than it was at the time. Therefore, the, not as many people are contributing to the plan. I've heard many Band-Aid solutions uh, that collectively, some of, some of which collectively may be used in the final overall solution. Uh, we have, uh, in fact, uh, payments being made now for full uh, college payments to uh, people who are millionaires. They, they happen to have the, the right combination of being retired under Social Security and yet they have youngsters who are going to school yet and so their youngsters get full benefits paid Social Security for going to college and they're millionaires. Now that isn't what Social Security was set up for. We have a disability provision in there that says that if uh, someone who hasn't worked for five years, not, under, not just under gainful employment, hasn't worked at all, can suddenly come in and say I want disability benefits and receive them. Now that's not what Social Security is set up for. Uh, one thing is that I don't think that we'd ought to look at the Social Security system in isolation to all the rest of the government. Uh, we have high employment and we have always encouraged people to voluntarily retire early. That helps with the unemployment problem. We don't force them to, but 70% uh, have been retiring early. And I don't think that's an unhealthy thing. If we don't uh, do that, if we turn clear around and uh, encourage people to work three or four or five years longer, there will be less jobs available. Uh, for those that don't have a job, we, uh, we will have more expenditures in some other areas of the government than we have now, and it will be somewhat counterproductive. Uh, I think we can come up with uh, better plans to uh, solve this situation, and indeed we must do so. And at age 62, the reason that the benefit is less than age 65 because it's been available for years. It was 80% of what's 65. Now that has some actuarial planning to it. But now to come out and say that we should reduce the 80% at 62 to 55% is not fair. It's not right. It won't be done. I assure you that. And, and in addition to that, it's a wrong signal that's sent to the people who are on Social Security because other people who are out here, say, at age 70 or 75 or at any age, look at this and they say, well now if they can do this and they can take away, then they can take away from a benefit that I may have anywhere, anytime along the line. And many people are on Social Security in this country and even though it wasn't meant to be this way, it's the only income they have. How soon do you think Congress might act? I think we're going to act this year. Okay. One last question, are Republicans and Democrats likely to agree on solutions? I think they are in this case. I can't predict when we're going to see it by. Uh, it's taken us a half a century or so to get into this mess. I would suggest that give us a, a 90 or 120 day leeway of when we might uh, start to take some steps to get out of it. Uh, we'll, be, we'll have to do something yet this year. Social Security wasn't intended to be the sole source of income for retirees, but merely a supplement. But there have been a lot of changes since the Social Security Act was signed in 1935. And today, Social Security is all that many retired persons have. Beatrice Washington is a volunteer worker at Edmonds Elementary School in Des Moines. She's known to her students as Grandma Washington. At 72, her only source of income is her $271 a month Social Security check. She told reporter Kevin Neiswanger what it's like to live on that amount. The thing's going higher, getting higher all the time and uh, you have to uh, budget and there's your insurance both insurances and and uh, then uh, there's uh, add other expenses for your home and all and food which is really out of reason and you have to you have, you have to learn to get along and I've, I've learned how to get along and if they cut the Social Security like they're trying to, I don't know what would happen. There you'd have to try to get along with the, without the necessary things. What would have to go first if they cut Social Security? Well, you'd have to cut back on food You'd have to cut back on, or try to cut back on medicine and not see your doctor so often. Hi, how you doing? Fine, how are you today? Fine. How was your class? I think it was fun. How are you doing? Fine.
good. Hope you enjoying your lunch? Yes, I am. You did good in the spelling bee this morning. Oh, yeah. thanks. I have been paying into Social Security for years, and uh, I feel that I have not, I have earned my Social Security. Beatrice is optimistic President Reagan and Congress will find a way out of the Social Security mess, and she hopes the system can be stabilized without having to reduce benefits. Beatrice says the President's proposal to let Social Security recipients earn more money without jeopardizing their benefits sounds good, but there aren't many jobs for senior citizens. They don't hire senior citizens. And so then you have to depend on your Social Security sure. full time? It's your age, you know. After you're over the hill when you're 55, and then when you're going downhill, rather, when you're, you know, over, 50, over 55, and so they don't want to hire too many senior citizens or elderly people. So what do you have to look forward to? Only your Social Security. In addition to the short-term problems with the Social Security program, there is a long-term problem. After the turn of the century, baby boom children will be retiring in droves, but there will be fewer workers to support the system. An Associated Press poll showed that 74 percent of those surveyed expressed little or no confidence that the Social Security system will pay off in their retirement. So we wondered what you thought. We recently asked some of you to speak out on the issue. Uh, I don't know. The, don't know how the, if they'll have be enough money left. I think it'll be bankrupt. We've got too few people paying into it and uh, too many people collecting that didn't pay very long. I doubt it very seriously. I don't think there'll be enough money for us. Uh, no, I don't think it'll be adequate or a viable system at that time. Why not? Uh, the economics of it doesn't work out with more re people retiring. There aren't enough people paying in to keep it going. Do you think you'll be able to retire on Social Security? No, not the way it's going these days. There probably won't be any when we grow, grow old. <laughs> I guess the little I know about economics, it just seems like something very drastic and very unpopular would have to be done in order to make it available for me. It's becoming clear to most people that Social Security alone won't be enough when it comes time to retire. There are many things we can do now to provide for a better retirement. To begin with, there are pension programs. 155,000 state, city, county, and school district employees in Iowa are enrolled in the Iowa Public Employees Retirement System. 33,000 retired workers are currently collecting benefits from the pension. Many companies also have retirement programs for their employees, but pension plans are not indexed for inflation, or most of them aren't, and what looks good now might not when it's time to retire. And estimates say 30 to 50 percent of all workers in the private sector are not covered by a pension plan. A presidential commission has suggested a universal pension program for all of us, but there are a lot of bugs to be worked out and it faces an uncertain future. Workers not covered by a pension have several alternatives. Money experts say we have to make every penny work for us. If you can afford them, there are several investment opportunities, ranging from stocks to treasury bills. But they often don't provide the investor with a tax shelter. And only one person is paying into the investment with a pension program. Both the employee and the employer contribute. Most banks and savings and loans can make it possible for the small investor to create his own pension plan. It's called an Individual Retirement Account, or IRA. Workers not covered by the pension plan can put up to $1,500 a year into the account. Basically, you pay the trustee or the bank, whoever it would be, the $1,500. They will then invest that for you in your own individual IRA account. Eventually, when you elect a distribution of that account, you will then pay income tax on both the $1,500 and on the interest it's earned during that period of time. If there are any deficiencies in this period of inflation, is that the $10,000 ceiling is probably too much in that uh, they can only contribute uh, $1,500. Now, in this time of high inflation, that may be all they're able to to, to add. The other thing, of course, is there's no employer making a matching contribution to the fund, so it grows only as fast as you can help it out. 
There is also something known as a Keogh account for its self-employed persons. That's our report for tonight. Congress will be examining the Social Security issue in the weeks and months ahead. We'll keep you informed on the latest developments each night on 5 TV News. I'm Rick Roberts. Good night.